Hi, my name is Rod Wetterskog. I'm the Assistant Dean of Corporate Relations at the Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Texas at Dallas. I'm real excited to be able to share with you some thoughts for those of you who think you might be interested in being an engineer, especially those of you who are in the process right now of trying to pick the best university for you. So welcome to my webinar. So you think you wanna be an engineer? How do you pick the best university? So I'm gonna teach you a technique called trade study. It's a skill that I've used over 25 years of working in high tech industry to narrow down the choices, especially when you have a real important decision to make. This trade study can help you make important decisions like what university to go to, what kind of job you might be interested in preparing for, and for engineers, it actually helps you to compare and contrast different kind of solutions. Whether you might be an industrial engineer working with a city to try to figure out what best utilities to implement, or if you're into a high tech industry like electric cars or electric devices, or maybe you're an environmental engineer or space engineering, all of these engineering careers require different abilities to make decisions. You have your technical skills, you have your emotional kind of behavior things that weigh into making an important decision. A trade study can help you narrow down those choices. So what are the eight steps that I like to use in making an important decision? First of all, ask yourself the five whys. If you wanna learn more about this technique, just Google five whys Sometimes it's spelled W-H-Y-S, sometimes it's just 5-Y. The bottom line to this technique is it really helps you dig down deep into what the root question is. When you ask somebody an important question like, so what university are you going to? Sometimes they'll just give you the surface answer. Follow their answer with a why. Well, why did you pick UT Dallas to be your choice? When they give you that answer, Repeat that answer back and ask the second why. When you do this four or five times, you can really dig deep and really understand, if you will, the specifications about the university that you're looking for. That's asking the five whys. The next step I suggest is forming an advisory circle. Now that's fancy talk for pull together the people that you trust most. It could be your parents, could be your uncle, your older brother, people that you really rely on to give you good advice, not necessarily what you wanna hear, but really strong advice, really kind of digging deep into what you might be most interested in. They know you, uh, they know your personality, they know your work ethic, and they can give you really good counsel. Now don't forget the people that are at your high school. Maybe these are some teachers that you really relied on, Maybe they were even hard teachers. They expected a lot from you. Fill your advisory circle with people that are gonna ask the tough questions. Next, collect data. Now we're gonna go into this really, really deeply. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here, but just to know along the X axis of your table, you're going to list up several universities. Now I've known some students that they really just wanna pick on three or four universities. I've also known some students that have 30 to 40 universities in their table. Find somewhere in between uh, three and 30. And then down the, the table on, in, on the rows will be the criteria that you, through your asking the five whys to yourself and getting advice from your advisory circle, believe are really, really important criteria for you to measure. That's how you'll be collecting the data. Then you're gonna analyze the data. And that's where the real fun of this webinar is going to take place. We have to separate the technical questions from the emotional questions. Sometimes when we make a decision, the reason why we pick our first choice is based more on emotional decisions than on facts and figures. I'd like to encourage you to, for this part of analyzing the data, look at the facts and figures first. Then we'll look at the emotional and the behavioral type things a little bit later on. That's analyzing data. The next step is to apply for the top four or five universities that are on your list. 
Now, sometimes application fees can be pretty expensive. And if you're applying to four or five universities, eh, it might exceed your budget a little bit. Be a little courageous and see sometimes if you can call the applications office, the enrollment office at that university and ask if they'll waive the application fee. Now, once you've applied, don't wait to be accepted. Really pick those top three universities first and make a visit. Now, when you're visiting those universities, and we'll get a little bit more into this detail as well, but while you're visiting those universities, now it's your chance to ask five whys of students. Kind of like be the uh, reporter on the street. Go up to a student and very cautiously approach them and say, hey, I'm thinking about coming here as a freshman next year, and uh, I'm wondering, could I ask you just a few questions about your experience at this university? And they might look at you and say, hey, get out of my way. Or they might say, well, sure. And if they say sure, they just start out with the very first why question. Well, you're here at UT Dallas. Why did you pick this university? And then from that, drive deeper and deeper, and hopefully you'll be able to collect some real interesting data. Now, another thing that students typically do when they visit a university is they go on the traditional tours. Those tours are great. They give you and your parents and your guardians a very high level view of what the university is, a little bit of its history, things that are very uh, interesting and unique about the university. They, they give culture, um, but sometimes they don't give specifics that might be really, really important to help you differentiate between one university over the second, over the third. Don't be afraid to dig a little bit deeper and before your trip, See if you can find what really, really is important to you. Make a few phone calls, and after your traditional tour that's offered to everybody, see if you can make some meetings and look at a specific laboratory or a specific classroom, or maybe meet with some students that are officers in a student organization that you might be interested in joining. Digging deep, looking at that information, collecting it for all three universities or all of your top three or four universities is what's important for you to fine tune and analyze your data. Finally, accept and be awesome. Now, when I say be awesome at that university, um, pretend that it's your full-time job. You are going to a university to, yes, get all of the excitement uh, enjoy the experience of what it's like to be at a university, but this is your job. This is what you're doing to really kick off the rest of your life. This is how you're preparing to be great at what you're doing, to give back to uh, to people, to, to help others have a, a better quality of life, to, to be able to design, build, and create solutions. So keep this as a really, really important priority. I'm not saying don't have fun, but don't major in ping pong and pull. Get in there and major in what you're there to study for. And then finally, you wanna make sure that you repeat this whole process. Because as I said uh, a little bit earlier, sometimes your situation, sometimes your priorities change. Uh, so maybe in your sophomore, your junior, your senior year, are you at the right place? Are you taking the right major? Now let's dive a little bit deeper into collecting the data. Here's my table. Now, when I picked my university a very, very long time ago, I had about 15 things that were important to me. So in my table, I would have 15 rows uh, that described, and I would know what they were, and I relied on my physics teacher, my algebra teacher, my mom and my dad, my older brother and my older sister, and I had a couple of uh, adult friends in my life that really mentored me and coached me. One of them was never afraid to tell me about my weaknesses. And so she was also on my advisory, uh, advisory circle. I worked with those people and kind of came up with about 15 different things that were really, really important to me. I'm picking five of them. And quite honestly, they're not in the order that I, uh, that I did them. Some of them are but you can get, you will, you'll, we'll get the gist of how to use this table. So here are the series of some criteria. Will I be accepted? Will I graduate? 
Now, the universities that I were picking were pretty hard to get into, so I wasn't sure if I was going to be accepted, even though I was in the top 5% of my graduation class. Now, my graduation class was all of 87 people, but uh, I was in the top 5%. So it was a rural, a rural town in uh, Pennsylvania, and I was worried about being accepted into some of these universities. Even more, since I was picking engineering physics and physics, I was more concerned about, will I graduate four years later? Because it's a tough program. And so I wanted to make sure that the university that I was picking was gonna be able to nurture me, to be able to bridge any kind of gaps that I might have, um, and to really help me through the graduation process. I was also, of course, concerned about cost, tuition, living on campus, the fun things that cost. Am I going to have enough money to be able to get through this? Then meeting my needs. Am I going to learn? Are the teachers there um, really good at what they do? Uh, I was interested in doing some undergraduate research. Do they let bachelor's degree students do undergraduate research? And then fun stuff. Now, uh, was, was it going to be a fun university or, or you know, was it really crazy fun? A party school? That was not in my uh, future. But, you know, I want to be able to work hard and I want to be able to play hard. And finally, in this particular setup, you know, does it have the reputation that when I graduate from there, people are going to look and go, wow, he went to that university. Let's, let's bring that person on. Good university, great university. So these are the five criteria that we're going to look at. Now pretend that I'm comparing and contrasting with seven, eight, maybe even 15 universities, but I'm going to narrow it down to three. We're going to look at this criteria, these five criteria, and I'm going to rank each one of them on a scale of one to 10 as to how important they are. So the first one, I'm going to say, will I be accepted and graduate? That's really important to me. So I'm going to give it an A. How expensive is it? Well, I've been working during summers. My mom and dad are going to pay for half and I'm going to probably have to take out a loan. I don't want to have a loan after I graduate for too long. And so cost is really important to me. Meeting my needs. This is the big one for me. I want to learn how to be a physics guy. I want to know about atomic physics and biophysics. I want to be really good. I want to know what my next step is. This is the most important thing for me. Fun stuff, I'm already a fun guy. So I'm going to have fun. I'm going to meet, meet friends. Uh, I'm going to be able to have a good time, but when it's time to get back to work, I want to get back to work. Um, I also want to play in the band because I play trumpet and I really, really like being in a band. So I want a band. That's, that's, those are the big things for my fun stuff. And reputation, pretty important for me, um, but I expect the, the universities that I would picked already, all three of them that I'm looking at right now, all three of them were really, really good. Anybody that graduates from there, they know that they've learned well. Now, I'm gonna compare and contrast these universities. The difference here, if you look at that third column, you see score. Total for the row equals 10. So that means the number that I assign to University 1 plus University 2 plus University 3 has to total 10. So if you've got 15 universities, you got to be careful how you vote for your universities as far as the score. Now, how do you, first of all, determine the score? You read their website, you go visit them, uh, you get interviews, you ask the five whys of students or faculty, you take the tour. Now, let me just caution you a little bit on websites. You can hire a great website and that website will look awesome. It will have all kinds of great information. It'll be entertaining and it'll be a great user experience, but it will not be truthful as far as how it reflects the university necessarily. So don't let a website be your, your criteria for choosing a university. Make sure you go and visit that university. So, University One, meeting my needs. I looked at University One and I said, a five. Now you might think right now, oh, five, that's not very good. But remember, we're totally the score for the entire one. So I've collected all the information. I've read through all of the stuff. Maybe I've even had a few phone calls of a couple faculty that I like and maybe would 
hey, would you be interested? Could I maybe do some undergraduate research with you or for you? Uh, I've made all those questions and now I'm comparing and contrasting. University one, I give a five. University two, I give a two. And university three, I gave a three. So notice five plus two plus three equals 10. And so that row equals 10. Now again, we're trying to take a little bit of the emotion out. There is certainly emotion when you're determining all of the data that you're collecting to see, does this university meet my needs? It's not just technical info, but it's emotional info as well. And so roll that into this number, but eventually assign a number to it. Now, some students have come to me and said, this is a great tool, but five, two, and three, that's, that's just too hard. I need more numbers. If you want to, you can make it add up to 100. And so instead of five, two, and three, it's 50, 20, 30, or you can have more delineation. That's up to you. Just make sure for this trade study idea to work that these numbers must add up to 10. Now, take the importance factor, multiply it by the university number, and in the first case, university one has a total of 50. Do the same for university two, and University 3, and you see how you can total up all the numbers. Now, when we fill out this entire uh, table, when I compared University 1, 2, and 3 to will I be accepted and graduate? What's the cost of it? Meeting my needs, fun stuff, reputation. Here are the numbers that I assigned. So you can see University 1, it met all my needs and the cost was awesome. But because it met all my needs, and the cost was awesome, and the reputation was really good, it was really competitive. And uh, it's really hard to get accepted at this university. I'll just tell you, it was Penn State. And so it was really, really hard to get accepted at this university back when I was a high school junior. And fun stuff, oh, there was way too much fun stuff. So I actually gave it a little bit lower number because it was maybe gonna be a little bit tempting for me. But you see all of the numbers, and then I won't tell you the other universities that I also did this analysis for, but now when you add the rating together, you'll see Penn State came up with 161. University two came up with 107, and University three came up with 102. So if I were to make my decision off of a trade study alone, then it would obviously be that University one was my perfect, uh, perfect choice. That's why I say, Now's the time to go and make that visit. If, if you've already visited it and you can the second time or the or the uh, you can visit your top two or three universities the second time, that's great. Uh, if not, you might need to just revisit. Maybe you, you took some business cards from some students or faculty that you met when you were visiting there and you can kind of refine and analyze a little bit further. Now this part of the trade study of the eight steps is collecting the data, that's the table, and analyzing the data. That's the uh, columns of, of creating a score and multiplying the score by the importance factor. And now you're analyzing using data analytics to determine which step is next. So why do you wanna visit your top picks? Every university is different. So make sure after you've collected all your data, and after you, you've done this data collection and analytics that you do, again, visit your top picks, uh, especially fine tuning what really, really is interesting to you. For example, at UT Dallas, if you're an engineering and computer science major, you have an opportunity to participate in a program that we call UT Design. Whether you're a freshman, sophomore or junior, you can participate in something called EPICS. And it's not just open to engineering and computer science majors, it's open to the entire university. So EPIC stands for Engineering Projects and Community Service, where you work with a charitable organization to define, design, build, and test a solution. Now we've actually had EPICS students create things uh, that have been used by adults with learning disabilities, uh, food banks, and even a library in a country in Africa. UT Design Capstone is a required course for every one of our engineering and computer science majors. 
They must take this course to graduate, very similar to 450 other universities in the United States that have an accredited engineering program. How do we differ at UT Dallas? About 80% of our projects are sponsored by companies. They're real world. You meet weekly with a company uh, engineer. You work in teams of four to six students. You, you go through the angst of what's it really needing? What are they really needing as far as a customer? How do you design this? Ah, the first design failed. What do I do now? Ooh, deadlines are coming up. And you learn, is this really what I wanna be? And you find out 90% of the time, our engineering and computer science majors are rock stars. How? Well, we've won first place in the nation at the National Capstone Conference and the American Society of Mechanical Engineering every year since 2014. And that's because this experience is just so enlightening to our students. And they have a 40,000 square foot space in order to design, manufacture, and build. That space is also open to UT Design Makerspace. Everybody who has a UT Dallas badge, whether they're students, faculty, or staff, they can come to the Makerspace with an idea. They can find some friends and they can, they can dream, build, and share what they've learned. In fact, we found that some people that go through the Makerspace experience actually form a startup company. We call that UT Design Startup. And about every year we have about 10 or 11 companies that compete for the UT Design Startup grant. If you win this grant, you receive a free UT Design Capstone team. That's a $15,000 value. Plus you get $5,000 in cash to pay for technical expenses that you might have. Now that's not pizza and t-shirts, but that's maybe you, you're gonna file a patent. Maybe you're gonna need a, a contractor to help. Maybe you're gonna need uh, some technical writing or advertising or marketing. So by the time you're done with your startup program, you can have at UT Dallas expense, your own startup company well on its way. Innovation Labs by Texas Instruments, co-locating companies by State Farm. When you come and visit UT Dallas, make sure that you call me and I'll take you a tour of our 40,000 square foot UT design space. And here's a picture of the open lab. That's about 15,000 square foot of space. And you're seeing mm, about 80 feet right there. So come in, visit UT Dallas, learn a little bit more. I'm so glad you were able to join me for this webinar. Um, I hope it brought some value to you. If you have any questions, send me an email and put best and your question in the subject line with a little bit of detail in your message. Again, congratulations on being part of BEST, and I wish you a very successful future.